Welcome to A Pastor's Perspective. I'm Ken Gray and I serve here at Calvary Life Family Worship Center. Today our devotion continues in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 4. We, we remember from the last uh, time we were in this chapter that there's been a horrific war. Israel has experienced a terrible defeat. The Ark of the Covenant had taken, been taken cap, captive by the Philistine people. And now it says that there was a man from Benjamin who ran from the battle and he came back to the city of Shiloh where he reported to the people what had taken place. Now Eli was about 98 years of age. He was heavy, overweight, and he was blind, and he was sitting at a seat. And when he heard this noise, it says in verse 17, then one who had brought the news replied, Israel has fled before the Philistines, and there has been a great slaughter among the people, and your two sons also, Hophni and Phinehas, are dead, and the ark of God has been taken. When he mentioned the ark of God, Eli fell off of his seat, backward beside the gate, and his neck was broken, and he died, for he was old and heavy. Thus he judged Israel for 40 years. What, what is so sad here is that Eli had grown very corrupt in his later years, having taken advantage of Israel through the sins of his own sons, and now his sons would be killed in battle. He experienced, you might say, three horrific losses in this particular context. First of all, the people that he served, Israel, suffered a terrible defeat and they fled. And when they fled, it tells us that there was a great slaughter. 30,000 foot soldiers died. That has to be, had to be a horrific loss. But worse than that, this got very personal with Eli because his two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, were both killed in the same war. But that was not the event that so shook Eli that he lost his life. It was the loss of the ark, which was the greatest loss. When he heard the ark of God had been taken, it tells us that he fell off of his seat backwards, his neck was broken, and he died at a very old age. Not only did this horrific thing happen to Eli, but his son Phineas' wife was pregnant at the time. When she heard about what had happened, the death of her father-in-law, the death of her husband, and the taking of the ark, she went into labor and gave birth. But at the time of her giving birth, uh, she, she would, did not respond when the uh, nurse who had told her that she had given birth to a son, there was no joy in her. As a matter of fact, it says this in verse 21 regarding this lady who gave birth before she died. And she called the boy Ichabob, saying, The glory has departed from Israel, because the ark of God has taken, was taken, and because of her father-in-law and her husband. She said, The glory has departed from Israel, for the ark of God was taken. Again, with this lady before her death, she states the greatest loss of all was not the loss of her husband, not the loss of her father-in-law, but the loss of the Ark of the Covenant, which represented the manifest ruling presence of God. I think sometimes in the church today that we worry about our losses. We get very upset about the loss of life. We get very upset about the loss of privilege, the loss of rights, you might say, and the loss of possessions. But I think the worst loss of all that we could ever experience is the loss of God's manifested ruling presence in our life. At those loss, the, the loss, you might say, is the greatest loss of all. As a church, as a people who belong to God, I believe it's important that we be valuing the manifest ruling presence of God. But the church has been more grieved about other losses at times than the very loss of God's manifest ruling presence in their midst. Let us pray this morning that God would restore to us an understanding of the value of His ruling presence in our lives, and especially in the church. Lord, we come to you this morning. Well, the church is often grieving over losses, often grieving over defeats that would seem to come to her. We pray that we would understand that the most important thing in our lives is not these losses, 
but the loss of your manifest ruling presence. God, we pray that we would begin again to value your presence among us, that we would value your glory among us. And that glory cannot be through our creativity. That glory does not come to us because of our abilities and our skills. The glory comes to us because of your presence. And we cry out to you as a church today that you would cause us, first of all, to value your presence and that we would seek you until you are fully restored in the midst of your people and that you would rule our lives through your presence so that we might know the tremendous uh, salvation that you have for us. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, thank you for listening to A Pastor's Perspective. We want to remind you that we have church here at Calvary Life Family Worship Center, Sundays at 10 a.m. God bless you and have a great weekend.